So our, our main and vital instrument we have to have right up front is quill, right? Absolutely. We've got an arrangement of feathers of different breeds, different types that were used at the time. Uh, all of these would make suitable quill pens today, mm -hmm. and a lot of these are readily accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that we sometimes have to compromise on, and that's just the nature of living history. Some breeds are endangered or protected. Uh, for example, in the 1840s, President Polk signed the uh, Treaty of uh, Peace with Mexico in 1848 with a, uh, a an eagle quill pen. Ah. That is illegal to own today. Yes. Do not, if you find one in the forest, leave it where it is, because right. you don't want to do that. But, and swan is hard to come by, those mm -hmm. were popular. But um, these are goose and turkey feathers. Okay. And goose and turkey, uh, wild or, um, or, or uh, domestic, mm -hmm. uh, will make excellent uh, quill pens. Uh, so that's a gray goose right there, wild. That's a domestic goose. There's a wild turkey, and mm -hmm. there's a domestic turkey right here. Okay. Uh, but what you want is a large bird with a strong flight feather, mm -hmm. and uh, goose and turkey is probably the most readily accessible today. One thing to point out is, as one of my friends liked to say, that there weren't very many peacocks running around medieval Europe. So when you see that in a movie, it's obviously an anachronism. <laughs> uh, but any basic large bird, swan right. was actually preferred because it has the largest of all the flight feathers that, mm -hmm. that was readily available at the time. Uh, the problem is uh, it doesn't give very well. It's got a very thick um, right. uh, shell to it, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't make a very forgiving pen. The goose was preferred by most writers just because it was strong enough to write with, lasted a long time, and it was flexible at the same time of being strong, so it made for a very good writing point. Mm -hmm. Very good. So obviously we can't just uh, pluck a feather off a bird. No. And, and start using it. What do we have to do to prepare? Well, what do we have to do to prepare? Well, you got to turn a feather into a pen. And the funny thing is, uh, it's not the same thing. Now, the, the Romans, uh, the word penna in Latin means both pen and feather. Uh -huh. So it's mm -hmm. actually that's where we get our word pen today. However, if it comes right off the bird, it's going to be too soft. Mm -hmm. I made mm -hmm. that mistake when I was a kid. This is where I started, if you don't mind a, a personal story. I started out trying to write like a pirate when I was about nine years old, and mm -hmm. I picked up a feather in a gift shop at a right. museum. And the moment I touched knife to, uh, to pen, whole thing shattered like glass. Mm. And I thought I was the problem there and I, I got right. discouraged and stopped doing it for a long time after that. Found out later the vital step is tempering. Now there's a number of ways you can turn a feather into a pen. The simplest and the oldest method going back to the Middle Ages is simply leaving it alone. If you leave okay. it for a year or more to dry in the sun, uh, it will eventually turn hard and So you like put plastic. it in the windowsill, yeah. sun shines on it, Sunny and it just place. ages. Yeah, and uh, we can probably speed up the practice today because we have cars, so if you mm -hmm. leave it in a hot place like in a car, it'll probably, maybe half the time it takes to to, uh, so uh, to temper. Just push that <clears> in your <throat> dash or in your back window. Exactly. Just age them right up in Exactly, uh, and you can uh, tell they're right to go because they turn yellow and uh, almost like plastic is what mm -hmm. you're looking for. Now, as the years went on, they came up with artificial aging uh, processes, mm -hmm. and uh, probably the most common of those, the best one to use today, was developed in the 1830s, it appears, uh, and that is uh, the soaking in hot sand method, and that's the one okay. I usually use. You soak the feather overnight in a, a glass of water or whatever it is, and that's going to soften this thing up so it's nice and, and mm -hmm. um, pliable. You know, pliable. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, take a can of hot sand, Take that, put it in the oven, heat it up for a little while, let it get hot. When it comes out, plunge it in the hot sand and just walk away. Mm -hmm. Leave it until it's cool. And it almost instantly, within a few hours, you'll have that same process that it would take a year or more naturally.